Okay, this lesson is going to be more of a technology lesson than it is a, a Taylor series or calculus lesson, uh, but it's pretty powerful. And I discovered some functionality within Desmos that allows you to visualize moving a Taylor polynomial off center. So I discovered this, you know, quite by accident. I had a little bit of help with some of the notation online. I'll explain that here in a minute. Uh, but just to, to let you know, this is what I was working on for my students to get them to visualize what a Taylor polynomial is. So down here, you'll see the familiar Taylor series for cosine. I have cosine up here. The cosine is in red. And in my Taylor series right here is in blue. And I've also defined this Taylor series dynamically. I've, I've let the upper bound be the parameter d, and I've defined d as a slider. So right now we're going from 0 to 1. And you could see that if you, you know, evaluate this from 0 to 1, you're going to get a second degree polynomial, which is this blue guy. But it turns out adding terms to a Taylor series within Desmos is pretty easy. This wasn't what I was excited about. This was, this was actually pretty straightforward. And, and you could see that that's actually pretty cool in and of itself. But what about, what about moving it off of the center of 0? turned out this was a little bit more of a challenge for me because uh, within a Taylor series you have to have the ability to take you know in, nth derivatives of your original function and to do that dynamically within Desmos was 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 hard for me I, I didn't know how to do it I was looking for some way to say go take the nth derivative of f create a slider for n and then you know, let my slider go from zero to whatever I wanted and have it spit out the derivative and, and it just wasn't working. So the part that I actually got help on that I that I found online, someone else did this part, um, was this right here. If you look at this line right here, I've defined a set D and within this set D, you got to use the square brackets to, to let it know you're dealing with the set, you define the elements of the set. And I've defined f, f prime, all the derivatives out to and including the ninth derivative. Now I will be the first one to admit that this is not very elegant. It's a little clumsy. It's a little, you know, clunky, whatever. Um, and it's a little bit limited to your ability or patience to, to just type out a bunch of derivatives, but it works. So how do I call that? How do I call that within another function? And right here you can see that at least this part right here, this part right here looks familiar for, for those of you who are familiar with Taylor polynomials. Um, but this, what, what's this all about right here? And if you, if you notice, it's my index of n is within the square bracket. So what does, what does this notation actually mean? If I plug a1 in, this says go to the set d and take the first element out. My first element is f of b and b is equal to zero. If I plug a2 in, it says go get the second element of d, evaluate it at b, and b is still 0. So if I turn that function on, you'll see that if I increase the terms, which remember that's the easy part, now if I, if I change my value of b, it's going to change all these values up here. It's going to shift everything over right or left according to the value of b, and now you can get a pretty good visual of moving that Taylor polynomial off the center of zero. And I, I think this is very satisfying. Um, it's kind of cool. It's a good visual to see what a Taylor polynomial is. So there you have it. Desmos, pretty powerful program. If you do know a way to take the nth derivative of a function uh, that's, that's easier than this, uh, go ahead and let me know. Uh, put it in the comment section and I will much appreciate it.